Welcome back to What She Said. Tonight, we are delving into Toronto's housing market. And goodness knows, we've been hearing stories about lenders uh, becoming more conservative, appraisers lowering home valuations. Many home buyers suddenly finding themselves short on financing. Some sellers even threatening lawsuits. Joining us tonight is a real estate and money expert who is going to share the biggest mistakes first-time home buyers make and... More importantly, how to avoid them. Lee Moore Markman, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So you, you already have advice for what we just talked about, backing out of an offer. And it's little known, uh, yet a simple step that's often not advocated. Tell us what it is. Yeah, absolutely. So the reason why this is even coming about is because we've come from a very, very hot market where you know it's been rising quickly. And so as a result of that, people have been told in order to purchase or actually acquire a property, there's no need for conditions. Now, the market has turned significantly, as you know. And even if you are pre-approved from your lender to be able to get a mortgage, mm -hmm. people don't realize that the property needs to be approved as part of the process. So the best way to avoid getting into the situation where you don't have enough money to cover the property is make sure that you have a financing condition and that you have an appraisal done. And do not lift that financing condition until the appraisal has come in and you know that your lender is going to provide you the amount of money that they told you they would up front. I find it interesting mm -hmm. that you actually said that when you bought your first home, you made thousands of dollars of yes. mistakes. Yes, I was 26 when I bought my first condo in the downtown skyline of Toronto. And I had no idea what I was doing at the time. I was just trusting blindly all the advice that I got. And in hindsight, now that I know better, I can quantify that I made at least $9,000 of mistakes. So Hell. Yeah, I mean, one of the ones is actually one of my big tips is that if you have uh, a financial gift that's coming from somebody in your family and you haven't maximized your RSP contribution to 25000 which is the amount that you can take out on the first-time home buyer's plan, interest-free, then you need to put the money in there. And that's what a lot of people don't think about, right? So you may be putting money aside for your retirement, but not necessarily be thinking, oh, my parents are giving me a gift. And it's very common to get a gift from the bank mm -hmm. of mom and dad but not recognizing that if you put that into your RRSPs first and then take it out, and it only has to be in there for 90 days, you actually have a significant tax benefit when you get your, your next tax return, or you could save that even for future years. Wow. I did not realize that. Yeah. yeah. And there's another tip in here about deposits. Yes. So typically when people put in a deposit, you know, your realtor will often encourage you to put in a sizable deposit. And again, that's to appease the seller. But typically the seller wants to hold the deposit. Mm -hmm. Now, where that becomes a little bit tricky is if when you're doing your conditions, you've got home inspection and you find there's issues with the property or your financing doesn't come through, as we already talked about, and you need to pull out of the offer, when the seller is holding your deposit, sometimes it can take a long time for them to give it back to you. And I've even seen some really tricky situations where folks haven't gotten back their entire deposit. So my recommendation is when you're putting in a deposit, give the deposit to your own lawyer to hold and trust. That way, if you pull out of the deal, there's no issues and you get your money back right away. Well, you better. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And when the market is really hot, mm -hmm. you know, and you're ready to put your offer down in a next property, if it's taken you a few weeks to get it back, it can really set you back into getting into the market. So to date, you've provided counsel on more than 100 purchase and sale offers and made more than 300 Canadian real estate deals. So, so tell us about big mistakes that you've seen other than you, first-time home buyers make. Yeah, so I mean, to, to clarify, I teach real estate investing across Canada. So right. I help a lot of my students and provide counsel on their deals. Um, you know, some of the mistakes that I see is not calculating your closing, closing costs properly. You know, people may not consider the fact that there can be a lot of adjustments, right? So there's elements where you may have to pay for the property taxes that the seller has already paid. You may be paying them back. So the timing may be a little bit off. So ensuring that you really know what costs to expect can make a really big difference and that you're not caught off guard at the 11th hour. Mm -hmm. So you have created a Canada's first ever course on home buying, which I think is fascinating because as Kate and I were saying earlier, you buy with your heart, but then you pay for it for 30 years. Yeah, and this uh, actually came about because 
in the GTA area when the market started changing in the springtime, I had such a massive outreach from millennials saying, okay, wait, this is our first time we can actually get into the market. And they had just so many questions that I thought, hold on a second. Of course, there really is nowhere for someone to get unbiased advice. Of course, you know, you're going to have your professionals that help you. But in the next sentence, I heard first time home buyers saying, yeah, but they get paid from the process. So they may or may not have my best interest at heart. So the course that I've created is called Home Purchasing Secrets, and it can be found at homepurchasingsecrets.com. And it's a six week online course where I give the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the entire process outlined so that folks know what to expect and know what are the big mistakes that are very common that people make. So do you do you talk to them at all about, let's say, choosing an agent? Absolutely. I talk about all of the professionals that they need to work with on their team, and I provide interview guides on the questions that you should be asking them. Most people choose their realtor and their real estate professionals the way they choose a restaurant. Like, they just get a recommendation. I walked into an open house. This gal smiled at me. That doesn't mean that she's qualified yeah. to negotiate on the biggest purchase of yes, your life. I remember my first, the first agent I ever used uh, priced my house low. And then I realized, and she said, well, I sell thousands and thousands. She priced them all low, never had to spend a dime on marketing. They were gone in 48 hours. And I said, no, I'm not selling my house for that. So I bumped it up 25000 It was still gone in 48 hours. But that's what, you know, those mm. things yeah. that you don't. So you don't know, which is why in these interview guides, I have all the questions that you should be asking these professionals to find out if they really are the right person for you. Now, there's lots of great professionals out there. Oh, there are tons of them. Yeah. But you want to make sure that you end up with someone that you really trust and has your best interest in heart. And if you know what to ask them up front, you can very quickly decipher if they're good for you or not. I hear a lot of people say that you may need an agent to sell your house, but you don't need one to buy one. Because if you walk in, the agent selling that house is your new best friend. Well, the agent selling your house, who people say is your new best friend, actually has no responsibility to you because they're selling the house. So their Mm -hmm. primary responsibility is to the seller. So, you know, in that situation, it's called double ending from a realtor's perspective. And I sort of view that as, you know, someone's playing a poker game and looking at everybody's hand. So really, the only person, in my opinion, who wins in that scenario is, is the realtor. So as a buyer, it is good to have a realtor who's very savvy, who knows what's happening. You know, they've looked at a lot of the properties before they take you there. And they could be a really good negotiator on your part. So I do think it's important to have your own representative from a realtor perspective. And from the perspective of what you choose, uh, you know, I mean, you can have, I don't know, 10, 15 houses on a street, and they're all about the same. What makes one worth more than the other? Well, because that's a mistake I would certainly make. Yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, we haven't been in a situation where there's 10 or 15 down the no. street. But, you know, I think it's it's up to the individual to really identify what are their top priorities in the property. Is it, you know, that it's been new and updated? Is it the location? Is it, you know, uh, some of the uh, amenities surrounding it? So you really have to decide for yourself what are your top priorities when you're looking for a home. And then, you know, when you find it, work with your agent to get the best possible price that you can for that property. So course registration for home purchasing secrets runs until October 1st? October 1st. Class starts on October the 2nd. And uh, they can enroll at homepurchasingsecrets.com. And I'm really proud to be providing Canada's first unbiased real estate uh, advice. Okay. And on that, um, we should note that your council is independent. It's not affiliated with any real estate organization or financial institution. Absolutely not. I'm a private investor and I have had a lot of experience and I'm just really sharing with people what it is that I've learned to help them to avoid some of the mistakes. I don't replace any of the roles of the professionals on their team, but you know, I want to share the good, the bad and the ugly of the industry so people don't make mistakes and can save their hard-earned money. Is it, is it, would you say it's just for first-time home buyers, or should everyone that is interested in, in moving? I would say it? it's interesting for anyone who's buying a home. There's elements that are specific to buying your first home, like you know the first-time home buyers plan, some grants, and some things that are available as a first-time home buyer. And I would say first-time home buyers are the ones who maybe have more questions and are, and are more cautious about mm-hmm. should I enter the market now or later, or which home to buy. Well, this sounds awesome. I I I think I should take the course. <laughs> <laughs> I would love Just that. in case. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. And what a timely and, and great segment. This is what she said. We'll be right back.